Let's start with the statutory provision that we touched on briefly in the last video, namely 28 U.S.C. 1367b, which sets forth an exception to the general rule in 1367a, conferring supplemental jurisdiction over any claim that forms part of the same case or controversy as one over which there is an independent basis for federal subject matter jurisdiction. 1367b will make more sense later when we've covered the rules on impleting, third-party practice, and joinder of parties. But for now, we'll give you the essence of 1367b, which applies only where the sole basis for federal subject matter jurisdiction over any claim in the case is diversity. It was basically designed to guard against the following scenario. Suppose that Jack, a citizen of New Mexico, wants to sue Bruno, a citizen of Arizona, and Esmeralda, a citizen of New Mexico, in federal court. Suppose that the basis of the lawsuit is the fact that Bruno and Esmeralda were both negligent in failing to clean up a spill at a restaurant where Jack ate, and which they operated together, and their combined negligence caused Jack's injury. This is a purely state law claim that does not implicate federal law in any way. So the only possible basis for federal jurisdiction is diversity. Suppose that Jack suffered total damages of $100,000, and that under the applicable law, both defendants are on the hook to Jack for the full $100,000, regardless of their respective proportionate shares of responsibility. Here it makes sense for Jack to sue both defendants so as to have multiple sources from which he might recover his damages. However, if Jack were to sue both Bruno and Esmeralda in federal court, the case would have to be dismissed for lack of jurisdiction. Claims for negligence like this arise totally under state law, so there would be no federal question jurisdiction. Also, the fact that Jack and Esmeralda are both citizens of New Mexico would destroy statutory diversity. 